In section 2.3, we get to our third type of model to model growth or some sort of trend in data. And these are called exponential models. And having done chapter one, a lot of this will be really familiar because it turns out that compound interest is exponential growth. So we've seen a lot of the concepts before and we've dealt with more complicated formulas than we're gonna see here. So this section will be a lot easier because we've gone through the compound interest section in chapter one. So you can read through this introduction, but basically the core concept is that an exponential model happens when you have growth happening as a percentage of the current amount. So however much your population is today, your population a year from now will be that plus a certain percentage. That would be exponential growth. And so population models often start with an exponential version. So you can go through and read this uh, quick description and sort of introducing the concepts. But we did something very similar back in the compound interest section in chapter one. So it should be pretty familiar and you should be able to look over it pretty quickly and easily uh, without too much confusion. And then there's a comparison to linear growth and kind of what the, the shape of the curve looks like is this familiar one that we looked at again back in chapter one. The general model looks like this. We have our population equals our initial population times one plus r to the t. Again, notice it looks like the compound interest formula, just simplified a little bit because we don't have n, that compounding factor, involved anymore. We're gonna just deal with something a little bit simpler, uh, but still a version of, of compound interest. So this growth rate is r, that's like our interest rate in chapter one, and this growth multiplier is not really a term you need to know, but you can also have exponential decay with the same model. There's a quick question about whether you should pick a linear, quadratic, exponential model, something else. Again, it's not something you'll need to do, but in case you're curious about that, you can read through this description and think about uh, how you would pick one model over another. Here's an example using the uh, population of Frederick County. You can go through this and basically it gives you a growth rate and asks you to make predictions using that model, just plugging in the initial population and the growth rate R and then making a prediction. Um, so you can read through that and again, go through the video for that as well. Then uh, here's an example, just interpreting a exponential model. Again, you can go through that um, pretty quickly. And then when it comes to actually building an exponential model, we are gonna do it manually using a little bit of algebra, and then we'll rely on the calculator as well. So we'll have a couple of different approaches and you can pick whatever works best for you. Um, so here's a um, quick description of how you would find this growth rate. And to find this, you need to know the population at two points in time, just like you do for a linear model. Um, the algebra is a little bit complicated, but you can follow these steps and um, extract this value of R. And once you go through this, you can follow that process for every example like that if you want to solve it manually. Here's an example of going through with actual numbers to see how to find this growth rate. Um, there are basically three steps of algebra that you need to do. And I would recommend going through this on your calculator and making sure you get the same numbers um, so that you know you're typing in everything correctly. Um, but then you can solve for that growth rate given two data points. You can also use your calculator for that, the same way we've used to solve for time in the past, where uh, you find the intersection between two things. And again, you can read through this uh, section here, but basically that's how to build a, a exponential model by finding the growth rate um, using your calculator. And then again, a familiar um, process where we are solving for uh, a time that you reach a certain amount. Again, we've done this with linear models and quadratic models already in this chapter. So we're gonna do the same thing here where you graph and find the intersection. So again, go through this example and make sure that that makes sense to you and that you can get the same answers. Um, but the process is just the same. There's nothing really new there. We can also do exponential regression. So 
Manually, we can build an exponential model if we have two points. If we have more than two points and we want to use all of them, rather than just picking two points to build our model, we can use all of them doing exponential regression. Again, it's in the same menu with linear regression and quadratic regression. You just scroll down further to exponential regression. So you can follow this example to see how that works. Nothing really new. It's the same process. And then the section wraps up with how to use Excel for the same thing. Again, it looks a lot like um, the linear and quadratic models. Um, it's a little bit more involved than that, um, so you should follow this carefully uh, to make sense of it. But once you do, then you can use Excel. And of course, you can use Desmos in the same way as well that you did with linear and quadratic ones. Uh, you just have to give it a exponential form uh, to solve for, and then it'll find the growth rate and so on. So that's section 2.3 on exponential models.